consultation hearing. You've got only about 20 submitters, so we will start off first with the character and most we will stand for that. I te whānau hui, whaia te matauranga ki a mārama, ki a whai take nā mahi katoa, tu maia, tu kaha, aroha atu, aroha mai, tato i a tato katoa. For this gathering, seek knowledge for understanding, have purpose in all that you do, stand tall, be strong, let us show respect for each other. Thank you, Dalvin. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to first call the Dean Rupp to come forward. Dean? There's not, no. So oh, sorry, just one sec, just take a second. I was going to do one more thing, is that a couple of things uh, I have to do first. So, first of all, I note the apologies have been done and we've uh, accepted those. Secondly, I've got a resolution on page 45, and I'd like to uh, read uh, 46, isn't it? 48. 48. So I'd like this resolution reads, to receive the council hearing submissions on proposed dog control policy and bylaw report dated 31st January 2023. Two, receives the submissions made to the dog control policy statement of proposal and the dog control bylaw statement of proposal. Three, resolve to accept the following late submissions from Alistair Bailey and Peter Pratt. Do I have a mover? I'll move. Second. Set moved by uh, Rita, second by John. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And now I'd like to start with our first submitted then. Come forward and, and um, floor is yours. Okay, we will have read my submission. I want to focus on just one aspect of it, the aspect of dogs and children. And you can see that at the top of page two of my submission. Um, I'm a resident of Takara Bay. We purchased our property in 1996 and we've been holidaying here ever since, every year. Um, we are um, permanent residents. We've been permanent residents for close on 10 years. So. I have a fair amount of local knowledge, not just about um, dogs, but about the history of the area and about dog research. Um, but also noting the changes in the area as, um, as the number of people on the patronage has increased. Um, I want to start off by talking about the Dog Control Act. In adopting a policy from this section, the territorial authority must have regard to this is the uh, um, clause 10. Four, the need to minimise danger, distress and nuisance to the community generally. B, the need to avoid the inherent danger of allowing dogs to be uncontrolled, to have an uncontrolled access to public places that are frequented by children, whether or not the children are accompanied by adults. And C, the importance of enabling to the extent that is practical the public um, use of streets and public amenities without fear of attack or intimidation by dogs. And lastly, the exercise and recreational needs of dogs and their owners. Now, if we have a look at um, um, the dog control, have your say um, website, it says Trent Coromandel is a great place for dogs and dog owners. We want to keep it that way while also protecting local wildlife and respecting the rights of dog non-dog owners. Our dog control policy um, and the associated bylaw seek to balance the rights of dogs and dog owners while preventing any potential harm. And then it goes on in the draft dog control bylaw, part one preliminary provision, five purpose. The purpose of this bylaw is to provide adequate opportunities to fulfill the exercise, recreational and socialization needs of dogs and their owners while minimizing any danger, distress or nuisance caused by dogs. My, with respect, I think Councillor McGrath asked about this, that the, the um, 
The um, Dog Control Act talks about minimising danger, distress and nuisance. It talks about avoiding the inherent danger to children. It talks about the importance of enabling um, people to use streets and public amenities. And lastly, it talks about the exercise and recreational needs of dogs. And I think that the Bible should be actually emphasising and is required to emphasise the first three. Um, at Takara Bay, over the summer, it is a place constantly frequented by children. Every summer, apart from this year, of course, the Takara stream flow reduces and benign waves build up a sandbar across the mouth of the stream, creating a, a paddling pool, a large paddling pool, safe and perfect for toddlers. For a family, older siblings play in and surf because it's, it's quite safe and the adults watch from close by underneath the shades of Urukawa. This is a family situation. It's much a family situation as the Pepe Reserve in Tyrell, where you've got um, a structured play situation. This is unstructured play. Um, play centre, kindergarten have day trips here. The, the local primary schools bring their kids here because it is a perfect place for children. Dogs are permitted off lead and there can be as many as 20 at a time. Most roam the beach at will, most under a degree of control, but a significant number under no effective control. Dog fights are rare, but they do happen. Dogs are required to be under control at all times, but this is never monitored or policed. By omission, council is allowing uncontrolled dogs in a public place frequented by children. My belief is that it is inevitable that a child will be hurt, caught between wearing dogs, perhaps, or warring dogs, perhaps. And the question is, what is council's responsibility? What is, what is its liability? What happens if a dog, if a child is mauled? Um, if we look at the Act, it says very, very clearly, um, the need to avoid the inherent danger in allowing dogs to have uncontrolled access to public places that are frequented by children. And this is a place that is frequented by children. Um, the the Bible talks about minimise any danger, distress or nuisance caused by dogs. The Dog Control Act says that Thirty seconds. Yep. Um, the, the territorial authority must have regards to the need to avoid, and the word avoid, I think, is really, really important. The rest of my um, submission you can read, and there are, there are some really important issues about the fact that Takara Bay is a um, heavy zone, the fact that we used to have dot all there, but we don't have any more and the fact that we've just about lost our oyster catches because of continual harassment by dogs. I'm not suggesting that the that, that dogs should be excluded at all. What I am saying is that this beach, the same as every other beach, should have the same sort of controls over the summer period when people are frequenting it and when children are playing. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for your local knowledge. Uh, any questions for me? Having none there, thank you very much for taking notes and uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you for the Thanks, Ben. Uh, now call on John Adams. John, I'd like to come sit up the front here, please. John, we have five minutes for you to, um, to let us know what your issues are. We've we'll read your submission, but we would like you to hold that support to be most of Thank you. First, I'd like to thank the Council for giving me the opportunity today to come back and speak to you in support of my written submission. As I have indicated in that submission, I have some major concerns regarding disturbance effects that rapidly growing numbers of dog owners and their pets are having on our beaches and harbours, and particularly the impacts these are having on the local wildlife population, but also on other users who do not wish their visits to be disturbed by unruly and uncontrolled animals. In recent years, the number of people exercising their dogs uh, on the Falmouth Hart Beach <coughs> and Harbour Fringes has grown exponentially uh, to the current point, uh, that, well, the point, the current level of dog controls are totally inadequate. 
and preventing permanent damage to the remaining wildlife <coughs> values of these areas and ensuring the safety and enjoyment of other recreational users and visitors. At times during the summer holidays periods, it's not uncommon to count dogs in their hundreds being exercised by their owners on the beach. I don't exaggerate. Um, this review is timely for more stringent and effective bylaws and with greatly increased law enforcement measures, I believe, are absolutely necessary for effective the continued growth of, of these current problems. In my written submissions, I've listed five points that I consider urgently require the county into consideration and action to help alleviate the current problem that I've raised. I'd like to quickly read you these points. My greatest concern is the effect that dogs and dog owners are having on the waiting birds that utilise a narrow strip of sand fronting the beach road reserve that serves them as their one and only high tide, remaining high tide roost in the harbour. Um, that, that piece of land, that uh, strip of land, I think for those who are familiar with that area, is roughly 400 to 500 metres west of the uh, entrance to the harbour yeah. on, on the southern shoreline. I note that this area is designated as a dog exercise area, <clears throat> and I request that consideration be given to uplifting us and re designating it as closed to dogs for the full 12 months of the year. I text a report to my written submission that outlines uh, in detail the, the importance of this site to local wildlife and the threats posed to, to their values, to these values. I'm also concerned about the lack of recognition, the important strip of beach and fortune. Uh, located between accesses 10 and 14, provides a breeding habitat for the New Zealand doctoral. Five to seven pairs have attempted to breed uh, their here over the last three seasons with no success whatsoever and extremely limited fledging uh, success in earlier years. Nest disturbance by dogs and people have unfortunately been identified as the main cause. I strongly recommend that this area also be designated is closed to all dogs during the breeding season. I have here very briefly the dog submission uh, to this review, and in particular, I'd like to express my support for the concerns they have regard, regarding the confusing signage uh, currently in place. This requires urgent and immediate attention. Although I understand and commend the Council for undertaking this review, I'd like to take this opportunity of expressing my dissatisfaction at the current level of law enforcement. That was undertaken at the Fong Tower Beach. There seems little use when having by dog, dog bylaws if there is virtually no or very little compliance effort being undertaken. A large section of the ever growing number of dog owning and holidaying public openly flout the dog mind and ignore sometimes aggressively any efforts by concerned locals seeking their cooperation to keep their animals under control. If you do nothing else, please significantly. Increase law enforcement of the <coughs> by warrant office and actually issue offence notifications and take prosecutions against offenders. It has become public knowledge that law enforcement of the bylaws is most unlikely to result in, pro in punishment. I support DOC's proposal bringing the dog's prohibited starting date back to October the 1st, but see little to be gained keeping it closed until the end of February. Most doctrinal listing is ended by the <coughs> by the young. Um, uh, the, and the young, sorry, pledged by the end of January. Uh, <coughs> in addition, I strongly recommend the following that the Council seek sites as designated dog exercise areas open to the public throughout the year. Such sites are increasingly being provided by other local authorities on reserve lands that do not have important wildlife values or other recreational uses. They are commonly provided with doggy do bag dispensers and disposal facilities and very popular with socialising with both dogs and their owners. Um, in conjunction with the Department of Conservation and the local volunteer New Zealand doctoral nest monitors, the council, that the council review all the signage relating to protection of wildlife populations <coughs> and the dog bylaws and replace the existing signage with much simpler and clearer ones in all public entrance ways. Uh, thank you. This is the advice. Thank you. Any questions for so, um, the, so you said there, you, you were sort of seem to be indicating that breeding season is October to January yes. rather than the February that's yes. proposed? Yes, most of the breeds are fully fledged and there's the area by the end of January. And that's presumably um, dodgerals and the other? Well, 
Well, the other, the other sorry, there are the, there are the, 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 the other species, uh, the, the frequent series and the more infections. Yeah. But um, they, they don't seem to be as badly affected so by, by disturbance by dogs and, and, and people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. Okay, thank you. And I'm working there. Is Dennis Allison available? Yeah. Here you are. Okay. Dennis, would you like to come forward? Dennis, we've had your submission, but we've got five minutes to uh, highlight any points that you'd like us to uh, make and understand. It's fine. Reading. Fair enough, Terry. If I'm all taking longer at all, permanent resident there have been for the last uh, 14 years. Um, and I can understand what the council are trying to do, like most other political entities, they are trying to keep the balance where everybody gets a chance. <coughs> and one of our beach is a long beach. We're about four and a half kilometres long. And the problem we have is that we've got dogs everywhere. We're up to 450 dogs during Christmas, New Year, period. And it's great to see that everyone enjoying themselves, but the dogs have a, have a serious impact on the breeding of our dogs and are a threat to young children. My, my thought is that to try and please everyone, keep dogs on the beach, is that dogs should be on a lead at all times. This would allow the dogs to be there playing with their, with their owners, because at this time, dogs are not under control once they hit the beach. They see so many other dogs there that they just want to go and sniff them. <laughs> now, going on with what John said about the confusing signs, we have a problem with the signs because somebody will come down access five, walk along to access 10, but at access 10, there might be a sign that says, Dogs must be on a lead because you're approaching a dot on this. This is fine, but they don't see that sign because they've come down access five. Now, if dogs were on a lead during the whole time they were on the beach, um, when the dot all season is on, I'm sure that we would alleviate this and you've, you've now got both parties happy. Because that sign is was very confusing, and if, uh, as, a, as a, one of the volunteers who helps monitor the novels and protect them, it is very difficult to explain to people why the dog signs are so confusing. I know they've attempted to alleviate that by having a flip flap thing on the on the signs of access ways. It doesn't seem to work if there's a dog nest nearby. And there's more need for compliance officers. I cannot believe that we have one compliance officer that does the whole of the South Coromandel beaches. It is just ridiculous. I've had, we've had some good officers there looking after this, but this year I haven't seen him there one single time. And that's just a, a waste of our time and everybody else's time to try and tell people that, you know, that it is an offence. Because if they just laugh at this, well, nothing's going to happen. What a waste of time that is. This year in, uh, in Mongamata, we had 23 nests, which is a lot of nests. We had 56 eggs laid, which is a lot of eggs. We had 35 eggs hatched. And we only fledged six dotholes. Now, if you think about that, I know it's weather related, some of it, human related, and dog related, but. What dogs do don't necessarily eat anything. They just scare the hell out of the, the, the nesting parents and they will abandon their nest because of that. Um, I just hope that we can come to a, a solution here because it is a beautiful beach and it's good that everyone could enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Any, any questions for Dennis? You may leave, Dennis. Thank you. Well done. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I'd like to ask Danny Bolton. Andy, I think he's on the line. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear, Andy. Thank you, Garrett. Yeah, well, first of all, good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk to my submission. Um, we'll try and keep this as brief. Obviously, don't intend to read the submission, which you have. 
But um, as everyone said, the dog uh, regulations are fairly confusing. I've been a resident, um, a permanent resident of Power Nui on the beachfront since, uh, to, <coughs> excuse me, 2011. I've had a property here for 20 odd years. Um, I just believe that the uh, some of the rules are not equitable for dog walkers, uh, dog owners such as myself, compared with the um, protection of the wildlife, which of course I'm all in favour of, but I just don't think that it is fair for a dog owner to have 40% of Pawanui Beach closed for six months of the year. And I note that one of the previous um, submitters said that um, that period perhaps could be reduced, which of course would be great. But I, I do believe that dog owners are getting a very unfair rap of this because um, if we look at the doctrines, I would contend that the threat of dogs it pales into insignificance compared with all the other predators that prey on these uh, little creatures, such as feral cats, which are on no control whatsoever, rats, stoats and hedgehogs, notwithstanding the fact, of course, that the evolution of the doctoral, well, I'm not an ecologist, but um, the, the, doctoral, the doctoral's nest below the high water mark. So when that, uh, whoever was the previous submitter said, you know, the number of eggs that have been laid, you'd have to think, um, well, where did they lay the eggs? A lot of them are below the high water mark and the next incoming tide wipes them out. So I don't think the dogs are the... Um, primary cause of why there are so few doctorals being fledged and I do have some numbers on Pawanui Beach and uh, in the area that I'm talking about which is north of the surf club to Billy Point which is the area which is closed for doctorals from Labour weekend through to the 1st of March we are talking single figure digits we're talking four five six seven <coughs> doctorals fledged per annum over the last three or four years in that area. So I think that to blame the dogs for the lack of doctorals is perhaps, um, whilst they might be a contributory cause, there are other reasons. Um, I'm heavily involved in the Pawanui, or what we now call the Tairua Trail, which we have a very significant trapping program. And um, with over 200 traps in that area. Now, when I walk down and look in the, in the dunes at uh, Pawanui in that area, I think I've seen one trap there. So if, we, if the doctoral um, minders are serious about um, you know, preserving doctoral's eggs, I would suggest that the predator control program needs to be significantly improved. Um, and don't don't start blaming the dogs, which is, seems to be um, yeah the case here. So, and I just want to make one further point that closing the um, beach for dog walking during the period sort of late early summer, um, uh, where we do get a prevalence of barley grass on the reserve. Where which the, the barley grass has these very sharp barbed ears which get into the dog's feet and other parts of the torso. I've had to take my dog to the vet every year. You get, I check him every time he comes back from his walk with me, and um, I've had to take him to the vet every year at a cost of some $600. So if I was able to walk my dog on the beach at low tide, where um, the dog would be. 100 metres away from the toe of the dunes where the doctorals seem to lay their eggs, that would be on the lead. I'm pre quite prepared that we could have the dogs on the lead there, um, but they're prohibited entirely at this time. So I think there are some solutions. Uh, I've mentioned a few other uh, tweaks to the bylaw wording in my submission, but they're fairly minor. Um, just to summarise, I, I just think that as a dog owner, uh, we are we are getting an unfair rap, and I would like to see some amendments to allow some relaxation in the area and or the timing for the beach closure north of the surf club. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Uh, any questions for Andy? Thank you, very comprehensive. Thank you, Andy. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, note those points.
Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, Penny. Yeah, we can have. Yeah. So we'd like to call for break. Right. Yes, go off and come up, please. You've got two, so we're giving you two slots. Time. You'll have two minutes to uh, put your oh, points okay. forward. So the first one is on behalf of Alison Henry, is that right? That's correct, yes. And then the second one on behalf of the Department of Conservation. For resource, we're all listening. Thank you. All right, so on behalf of Alison Henry, who's unable to make it today, um, she has asked for me to speak um, and read her notes on her behalf. Uh, she strongly recommends DOC submission, which gives information about the New Zealand doctoral and the reasons why dogs are a problem on beaches during the doctoral breeding season. Her focus is on Cook's Beach, where I'll read it as she has actually written it. My focus is on Cook's Beach, where I have been a volunteer looking after doctors for more than 12 years. Over this time, the number of visitors and dogs each year has increased. It's important to remember that the New Zealand doctoral is an endangered endemic species with about 2,500 left in the country. In comparison, the combined number of Kiwi in some areas is 53,000 birds. The doctoral's nest on the open beach and about eight pairs have established breeding areas at the western end of Cook's Beach. One of the biggest threats they face is disturbance from dogs. Clear rules governing the dog control, the control of dogs during breeding season is essential. Current problem, two agencies set the rules about dogs and each agency has a different purpose. Signs from both agencies are placed at the many access ways to Cook's Beach. Number one, TCDC's focus is to protect people. Their signs prohibit dogs from the beach during the main holiday periods from 9am to 6pm. These signs are green signs along the entire beach stating dogs allowed off mood. These flip to red at holiday time stating dogs prohibited from beach 9am to 6pm. $300 penalty applies with no control of dogs outside these times. The signs are then flipped back to green after a long weekend. Late last season, orange signs arrived stating nests ahead, dogs on lead. These may be 20 metres from the access, the next access, which may then have green dogs off lead signs. Dogs' focus is to protect the wildlife. Signage is placed to warn of a nest. These are green signs under the Wildlife Act with pictures of birds and warnings to keep away from nesting areas. Blue sign stating dogs on lead, which may be next to a TCDC green sign, allowing dogs off lead. The outcome, literally a dog's breakfast. Far too many signs, often with conflicting messenger, messages, which can cancel each other out. People end up taking no notice of any signage and do what they wish. TCDC have few enforcement officers who cover large areas. It is a waste of their valuable time flipping green signs to read them back to green after a holiday. What is required at Cook's Beach? The number one focus must be on protection of these endangered birds. It is essential that both agencies present a clear and consistent message. Simple signs are needed stating what dogs are or are not allowed to do on specific parts of the beach. The recommendation from the 1st of October to 1st of March is stretch of Cook's Beach from the main access opposite number 29, 30 Marine Parade. Um, just along from Reavers Ave to the stream at the western end of the beach and around the stream to the mangroves. This is about a quarter of the beach. Signs co branded by both agencies showing one message dogs on leave at all times, 1st of October to the 1st of March. East of this area, current regulations remain dogs prohibited at 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Dog exercise area at Pooring remains the same. Well, this actually does mirror what um, I have in my. Um, I'll just ask, uh, thank you for that. I'll just ask if there any questions around that to submission? Yes, no? um, yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to get back to um, So the recommendation C was saying Shakespeare Cliff Reserve be designated an off lead dog exercise area. So, and I'm just looking at that on the map at the moment. So that would be that whole. 
that whole area is suggested for that? Um, I'm not familiar with the Shakespeare Cliff area unless that is something to do with, um, with Lonely Bay. Oh, yeah. But to me, it would be more the Shakespeare Cliff. Lonely Bay or Pine to Pole. Right. Okay. Which is also under the same rules as Cook's Beach. Right. Okay. Right. Which is what she's proposing, and I outlined the same in my submission. Mm -hmm. From that area from 2930 on Marine Parade through right to the end of the beach. Okay, so thank you for that. So you may start your one for the conservation. And also, just add to that that the doctoral season does end at the end of February, um, mid March. The breeding season part finishes maybe mid January, but after that, we still have fledglings on the, on the beach that are unable to fly. So they Possibly won't fly to about the end of February, um, mid March. Oh, okay. Just, just to confirm that. Yeah. All right. Hello. So you have your five minutes. Away you go. Thank you. Yeah. I'll to do my best. Uh, kia ora. I am Frau Miller from the Department of Conservation, and I'm the project manager for the Coromandel Doctoral Management Program. The program helps to protect over a quarter of the endemic Northern New Zealand doctoral population at 43 key breeding sites across the peninsula. Aside from monitoring, fencing, and the placement of signs, a large part of the program involves advocacy and education. Within the program, we also manage a large network of volunteers who dedicate their time and efforts to protect these charismatic little birds. The most challenging battle for our rangers and doctoral minders is the summer visitor surge that brings with it an obvious increase in dogs, and that's labour weekend onwards, being exercised at these breeding sites. Even dogs on lead are an extreme disturbance to nesting shorebirds, and that dog bird will leave a nest to distract the threat, leaving eggs and chicks exposed. Therefore, dogs off lead are far, far more dangerous. It's worth noting that doctrines are creatures of habit and will nest in the same area on the same beach each year. With this in mind, as well as the number of breeding pairs and likelihood of a successful outcome, DOG proposes the following DOG biannual, dog biannual changes. Doctoral breeding season is from mid-August through to March, and DOG restrictions, restrictions commence at late weekend. It would be beneficial to have this brought forward to the 1st of October, providing an additional three weeks of quiet DOG-restricted beaches for chicks to grow and fledge before the busy season. Arrives. At Kuatuna Beach, dog, dog strongly supports TCDC's proposal of a dog's prohibited area from October to March. However, the size of the proposed dog's prohibited area could be reduced. Six pairs nest in close proximity to the stream at the eastern end of the beach, leaving three quarters of the beach free for dog exercise area. The stream provides a safe space for families to swim. Having dogs in the area as well only exacerbates the disturbance to nesting birds. A dog's prohibited area surrounding the stream from October to March each season will give the doctors the potential to fledge 12 to 18 chicks. This season alone saw more than 12 nesting attempts with no success due to dogs' disturbance. At Cook's Beach, approximately 10 pairs nest along the entire beach, with the majority of eight pairs nesting from the main walkway entrance, 2930 Marine Parade, through to the Recreation Reserve at the western end. This area would benefit greatly from a new dogs on lead at all times rule from October through to March. During the nesting season, we have approximately 20 temporary dogs on lead signs in place in multiple beach accesses. The area covers less than a quarter of the entire beach and it would greatly lessen the confusion it creates to the public and workload to dog, dog control officers. Due to the number of access points, official and unofficial, aerial phot photographic signage would be essential. Wangmata Beach has 20 breeding pairs plus with the majority at the southern end of the beach at Otahu Estuary. Due to territorial competition, some of these pairs are spreading themselves further along the beach outside of the current dog prohibited zone. DOC proposes the current dog's prohibited area is extended north to beach access 15, a small increase but hugely beneficial to the existing three pairs that nest there. 
current rules for the remainder of the beach could stay as is. Dock and volunteer doctoral minders had an extremely difficult seat in that Tyra beach. The dog's prohibited rule is only in place from 9am to 6pm from the 20th of December to the 31st of January. This means temporary signage must be installed, which is often ignored by local dog owners. On a regular basis, we see dogs roaming freely through the sand dunes and chasing birds inside fenced areas with no owner in sight. Bible review aside, dog owners are aware that fines for breaking the rules are rarely issued and these need, this needs to be addressed urgently. With review and changes to the council dog rules at certain beaches, dogs on beaches will continue to severely impact the local dog for population. We understand that Coromandel beaches are popular spots for owners to exercise their dogs. We are not asking to exclude dogs completely, but creating small pockets of dog-free areas at certain beaches will help dog for breeding efforts immensely. In areas where a section of the beach is prohibited for dogs, Otana, Pawanui, and the Poetry Beaches are perfect examples of how doctors and dogs can share the beach successfully, and I can provide statistics to support this. Finally, DOC will support all existing wildlife restrictions around the peninsula we have in place now. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Question. Um, my doctoral ecology is quite rusty. Um, so um, we had a previous bit of talk about the ground-based predators, but um, they are also attacked by aerial predators, are they not? So leaving the nest is a problem because they're open to attack by... Yes. Yes, so there's avian predators and they may be blackback gulls and they will attack a nest or chicks that are unguarded and um, you yeah, can swallow the eggs or even the chicks in one go. Avian predators are definitely a problem, but it's not only that, it's also the exposure to extreme heat, so the eggs, the embryo inside the egg can perish. Can I have another question? Um, so my other question, um, in several of the written submissions there was um, some of the beaches are saying that they're not experiencing very many tourists at all, and it's only really in local dogs. Is that something that your doctoral minders are seeing as well? That actually there there are some beaches where the restrictions are slightly tough because there are no visiting dogs as such, and it's just residential dogs. Sorry, so the question is, and um, are there some beaches where you where your minders and, and your your experience is that that actually there are no visiting dogs, and that it's just the local dogs that are issues that they have um, issues with? I, I, one or two do come to mind, but I think that most beaches are holiday um, um, sites or, or you know areas and they do, most people do bring pets, um, but we do have some beaches where we have um, permanent residents who own dogs and they feel because they are permanent residents they do have a right to have access to the beach as they feel free. So that the um, dog buyers don't um, apply to them. But Tyra is a, is a good example of that. I speak to many people on the beach there who um, will say to me, look, I've lived here for so long and um, you can't tell me what to do. So that's, that's a okay. common one. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. No, sorry. No, this is just for hearing people. We take all this information on board, though, and, and it's put into a deliberations package, so we'll come back and deliberate. So we just need to hear from you. I think we have to that. So thank you. Thank you. Very much. Okay, um, so just moving on. Have we got... Sheila. Sheila. Sheila is online. Oh, Sheila. Sheila Wesley. Can you hear me? We can hear you, yeah. yes, loud and clear. All you right. Can, your camera on and off, it's up to you, but uh, we can hear you. Thank you. This, this is in addition to my submission after talking to um, 26 local um, residents. I've been a resident in Kurtuna for approximately 15 years now. So I'll just read off my notes. Certainly. Um, I had a consultation with 26 Kurtuna residents and batch owners. Everyone agrees this new proposal for Kurtuna beaches is far too restrictive. 
especially pr the prolonged ban over the summer months of the main part of Kurtunu East Beach. It is also noted that the area 400 metres each side of Quarry Point, previously at the last um, discussion on dog bylaws, was granted an off-leash at all times. This has also been removed. The proposals are not acceptable to the local community who feel the current restrictions are adequate enough for all beach users and wildlife. The only change requested to current policy would be amending the allowed times to before 10 a.m. and after 5 p.m. as requested in many of the submissions you've received. One, Kurtuna residents respect the beach and bird life. Two, high tides, rats, cats, stoats and black back gulls are more of a threat to dotterel than dogs on a lead. Families and people sitting, and I've seen this myself, very near to or walking on the beach, near to dotterel and oyster catcher nesting areas, are just as stressful to the birds as people walking a dog on a lead. The new proposal would mean Kurtunu would not have an all year, any time, off leash dog exercise area. Apart from walking on a busy State Highway 25, where there are areas with no footpath, there are very few areas to walk dogs. DOC and TCDC need to work together with clearer signage and educate the public regarding nesting birds. During holiday periods, it would be advisable to employ local um, people to head, educate beach users. I know this has been done at Fittianga Wharf and apparently it's working well. An online petition against these proposals that I put up now has 240 signatures to date. I'd like to stress the bylaws, which somebody else has mentioned, are supposed to provide adequate opportunities to fulfil the exercise recreational and socialization needs of dogs and their owners. The proposed beach and reserve restrictions do not allow the need of local Kurtuna dogs and owners. Also, minimize the potential of danger, distress or nuisance caused by dogs and promote the responsible management of dogs. This is why people should have a lead on their dogs at all times when they're in areas where there are children, or any other possible danger. But if dogs were made to be put on a lead, there would be no need for this total ban. Thank you for listening to our caring community, Kurtuna residents. Thank any you, Sheila. That was uh, very informative. Um, any questions for Sheila? No, well, thank you. We've heard your submissions and your points. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to now ask Gary Hines if he'd like to come on. Good morning. Good morning, Gary. Uh, welcome. And uh, you've got five minutes to uh, let us hear what your issues are. Uh, thank you for your time. It's, I'm talking on Tapuya Hot Water Beach. I'm Chair of Hot Water Beach Lifeguard Service out there. And for the well, probably the last 15 years, we've been working with the uh, dotterel crew looking after the dotterels. Our first point probably is that we've got an MOU with Nati Hay in conversation with Joe. Uh, it's fairly apparent to them it's a very sacred site, as you guys are probably fairly well aware. It's an Udapa, and he, in his version of it, doesn't agree with dogs being on that end of the beach and the south end of the beach around because it's an Urupa and the defecation of dogs down that end, rolling forward onto that. Once we get like pre-COVID, we are having 800,000 people a year coming to Hotwater Beach. So you've got a large number of people down that end of the beach, plus dogs, it's not a good mix. And for us, we've got to go down, and we, we go down and kind of police that as part of our job of looking after the kaitiaki of that location. So we're constantly, telling people in the first part of this season, we were telling those first uh, two months of the season, 
we had two to three dogs a weekend coming onto the beach that you'd have to go down and explain to them they weren't allowed down there. And over the peak period, where we're there for seven days of the week, you're looking at three to three to four dogs. There's now uh, seals appearing along Tapuia quite regularly. We've had three or four uh, leopard seals down North End. And when, uh, yesterday morning, while I was out at the beach, we actually had uh, one coming up down the South End. So that with dogs is not a good mix. Uh, for us, a uh, complete ban for that end works better because it's easier to put, uh, kind of police. And with the hot pools, as you're all aware, they don't come into a set time between, say, six and nine during the day, or six, nine in the morning to so six at night. They can come and range it, so it's easier to keep it policed the way it is. And just with the sheer number of people coming on the beach, I personally like to see it get extended from the start of October right through to Easter. So we're actually covering that Peak, peak period of numbers of people on the beach. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gary. Uh, any questions for Gary? No questions, Gary. So thank you for your information. We've made it, and uh, thanks for coming on today. Um, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's Brian. Brian Patrick. Uh, Welsh. 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 Yeah. Is he available? I think it's a typo. I think it's Walsh. It's supposed to be Walsh. <laughs> Can we have you, Brian? Submission. He is online. He's, he's actually come for his phone. So, right. can you unmute, Brian? Give him a little second before we get this on. Yeah. yeah. Then you can definitely be able to see if I can unmute you. Okay. So we're trying to unmute you, Brian, if you can hear us. So uh, just bear with us. We'll see if we can get you online. Page 347. Okay, no, he has to do it from his end. We can't unmute him. Brian, can you, can you hear us? If you can, put your hand down to show that you can hear us. Oh, yes. Okay. So, so we need to unmute your already. We can't unmute your already from here, so you must have a mute button on. Can we push these buttons? <laughs> we'll just give them a couple of seconds. This is the last person before... 11 o'clock, so try and be with them for a few minutes to see if we can get them on. Yeah, we can't get a hold of him. We can move on to Christine and I can get one of my team to contact him. Oh, is Christine here? She is online. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, my team's going to try and contact him. Yeah. So, Brian, we'll just try and we'll put you uh, sideline for a second and we'll ask Christine Hatton if you would like to uh, come on and uh, take your place and we'll keep you in mind for later, Brian. Christine, you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. You can have your camera can on. Can you see right. me? Can you see me? Oh, hang on, I'll just switch that. So you can see me as well. Yes, yes. we can see you, thank you. Okay, good morning. Um, okay. We've got five minutes and you're happy to proceed when you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time today and hearing all the community. It's really important to us, so thank you. Uh, my name is Christine Hatton and I've owned land at Sailor's Grave, which is known as Takaro Bay and Pahutakara Grove, for 30 years now. I work at the aged care in Tairua as an activities coordinator and a caregiver. So I'd like to start with the saying, dogs are a man's best 
friend. This quote came from King Frederick of Prussia, who stated in 1789, the only absolute and best friend that a man has in his selfish world, the only one that will not betray or deny him is his dog. Excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous. Wikipedia states that um, humans domesticated dogs 23,000 years ago. So we have a long history of close relations, loyalty, friendship, and companionship with dogs. Whether they're herding sheep, hunting game, supporting people with disabilities, rescuing people in earthquakes and avalanches, de detecting medical conditions such as seizures and cancer, or simply acting as a companion, dogs help humans with day-to-day -day tasks many of which may not be possible without them. As companions, the health benefits of living with a dog have been well documented, many scientific studies, and as reported in a recent Time magazine, the health benefits of living with a dog include links to a longer lifespan, lower risk of cardiovascular disease, reduces the adverse health effects of living alone, can decrease allergies and asthma in children and increase opportunities for socialization. The study's author emphasizes that these health benefits are only applicable if the dog is well exercised and cared for. Even if dogs didn't provide direct health benefits, the unconditional love and companionship they offer is invaluable. They're at our sides when we're sick, sad, and lonely. They love, they love us even when we are grumpy, rude, and bad-tempered. Dogs are the ones who seem to understand us on a level we cannot fathom. The truth is, we call dogs our best friend because in most of the ways, they matter, and they are. As dogs and humans have developed a deep relationship over thousands of years, Dogs have become part of our families. We take pride in our dogs. We play with them, hold them close, and rely for, with them for services they evolve to provide and enjoy. So that's just a little precept on dogs. So Tyra is a population of mainly retired people coming to live by the sea and enjoy the beach and bush. Many are on their own and their dogs are their companions who take them for a walk every day and help them feel safe. I have lived on my own with my dog. He gets me up every morning for a walk, is always excited to see me when I get home from work and snuggles up with me at night on the couch while I read a book or check my emails. He is my family. The main reason I brought my property at Sailor's Grave to Cairo Bay was because it was a dog-friendly beach. I've always had a dog as a companion for myself and my children. I also love birds and have been part of the community trapping and setting goat traps to bring the Kiwi back. In the early years of sailors, I would hear a Kiwi call maybe once a year, twice a year. I now hear them almost every night. Over the years, the Kiwi numbers have improved due to trapping and pest eradication, which I have maintained on my land while always having a dog. The numbers of dogs at Takaro Bay has increased, and yet our Kiwi population has increased. This shows that dogs are not impacting on the Kiwi. The large number of dogs at Takaro Bay is mainly due to the shutting down of many beaches to dogs especially Hotwater Beach. I always meet dog owners from Hotwater Beach at Takaro Bay due to the restrictions there. I would actually recommend easing the dog restrictions at Hotwater Beach and not putting restrictions on Kua Tuna to help alleviate the pressure at beaches like Takara. 30 seconds, uh, Christine, sorry. Oh, okay. In the submission by Alan and Di Tate, they included a picture of a kiwi on the reserve. That was actually a picture I took of the kiwi. I was walking up my drive with my daughters 
and it, we heard a rustle and I took the picture. So my neighbours also have a dog. I walk that drive every day. Yet we have Kiwis surrounding us. So it, it means that we can all cohabitate together. I just wanted to mention the dotterels on the beach as well. The natural breeding ground for dotterels is in open sites, typically low-lying sand or gravel banks and sand bands close to beaches and lagoons. Their major breeding sites are Apotari Beach, Matarangi and Pawanui. Takara Bay and Pahutakawa Grove have, are bordered by cliffs and rock faces with high tides constantly washing out the whole beach. The the Christine, Christine, um, the I just wanted to say one more thing, that the tides are actually washing out with climate change, and I've seen the destruction more than dogs on the beach. Um, I do want to finish with my summary of, I would like to see Takara and Pahutakawa grow commonly known as sailors, as kept as a dog-friendly beach. The track from Takara Bay to Otara Beach should remain a beach, a walk for Kiwi-trained dogs or dogs on a lead. We need to maintain current beaches that are dog-friendly, such as Kuatuna, and look at identifying beaches and areas that can reopen. Thank and you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening to me. I think you've answered a lot of our questions or put a lot of information forward. So thank you very much for the information. And it will be considered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Brian. So Brian is back. Brian, we're reading for you. Are you ready? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear, Brian. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. Well, I apologize for not being there in person. I fully intended to be, but with the recent state of emergency in the country, I was pretty shocked that the meeting was even going ahead. However, thank you for taking the time to hear me out. I'm mainly addressing the proposed restrictions at Kuatuni Beach. Um, first of all, I want to say I want to applaud you guys for um, keeping King's birthday weekend and Maturiki weekend free of holiday weekend restrictions. That was a it was a good decision, seeing as those are in the off period and not during doctoral nesting. Um, however, I do disagree with most of the new proposals, um, including mainly the one that says that dogs should not be allowed whatsoever from Kalfira Drive east toward the, the old doctoral nesting site. This all might be a moot point because of what the cyclones have done and there's no more doctorals there. Nevertheless, I'll just talk as if there are doctorals there. Um, well, all the action, all the action of restricting from the 1st of March, uh, sorry, for Easter and Anzac weekend, all that does is put more stress on the people. See, the people, now that we have more people in the district owning dogs than ever before, I was absolutely shocked that you're putting more restrictions upon us instead of loosening the restrictions. The locals are responsible. They keep their dogs on the lead when they're anywhere close to the old doctoral nesting sites. I also agree with Sheila that the area on Kuatunu to the west of Kafira Drive we fought hard in order to get that for a dog recreation area. There are no doctorals down there, and there's no reason why that should be removed. You got to bear with me here, people, because I'm trying to not read directly off of my notes, uh, um, directly off of my submission. I'm just sort of skimming through. I didn't. Where are you going? Are you going well? Yeah. Sorry about sorry about my sort of stop and go there. Anyway, I won't waste any more of my five minute time. <clears throat> so, yes, um, I vehemently disagree with prohibiting dogs east of Kuatunas Kalfira Street beach access from Labor Weekend of the 1st of March. Um, hundreds of meters of beach in those areas, the doctorals aren't even there. They're down by the creek, or they used to be down by the creek. And so, yes, I agree that possibly, um, yeah, we should just keep it with the dogs on the leads down within 100 meters. Um, additionally, um, 
you could put up better signage, um, conservation area sign, as there is at uh, Farukaho, and also by the um, Yacht Club in Pitianga, that sign would also help. Um, also, in addition to that, I would like to support the idea of the 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, dog restrictions. Perhaps they could, um, perhaps they could be on leads um, b between 9 and 10. That might just be too much complication. Um, a lot of locals work in hospitality. They don't get home until 2, 3 in the morning during that busy period. So waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning is very difficult for them um, to get the dogs walked. And then they're working um, from, say, 6 o'clock onwards. Um, yeah, I think that the council needs to actually listen to what their ratepayers and residents want. The submissions were firmly in favor of keeping the restrictions at Kuatunu as they are. Um, we're not, we're, we're responsible people. We care about the doctorals when they were there and we hope they come back. Hello? Yeah, still there? Okay, great. You've got about 30 seconds though, okay? 30 seconds, yep. I would also like to request if it could be in the public domain who the people are that put forward these ludicrous proposed restrictions um, because they're, it is not fair to, that without any consultation with the people that are paying their salaries that they go ahead and in a shadow manner, hide from the responsibility of putting all this stress upon us. Furthermore, I'd just like to say that the areas that are dog friendly are metastasized and riddled with children. There should be better signs up that say, children, this is a dog area for, so take your children here at your own risk. Thank you. That pretty much sums it all up. Um, I wish I could have been there in person. Um, I'm very, very offended by what is being put forth to us. And I hope you listen to the people and don't just go ahead with it. Um, listen to what the people have said. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your time. Uh, any questions for Brian? No questions, Brian, but thank you for being patient and getting on board and we've listened to you. So thanks very much. Yeah, like like others, I care very much about this. I'm at work now, letting everything fall behind in the busy kitchen just to get this point across. So I please please listen to the people on this one. Thank you. Okay. Thank um, you. Is Mark Vicky there? Actually, I'm for the chair. Kim. Yeah. Okay, Kim. Mostly. Morris. 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 Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, yes. Hello, thank you. Um, first, I Is just there want to... Are you doing two submissions here at the moment? You're doing one for yourself and one for on behalf um, of... No, what, I'm going to do one on behalf of the Ratepayers Group um, and my partner, Mark Vitti, will do a private one on behalf of the two of us. So we'll just keep those two separate. Okay. Which one so, are you going to do first? She's going to do page 194. 194, thank you. Okay. Thank Where you. you go? Thank yeah. you very much. Um, I just want to acknowledge your time um, in the state of emergency that um, you've uh, committed to going ahead with this. I, f I find that very impressive and we thank you for your efforts and hope your times aren't too pressured. Um, so I'm the co-chair of the Hot Water Beach Resident Ratepayer Group alongside of Jane Francis. We're about one month old and so we're very much in catch-up mode. Um, so I'm speaking on behalf of the Ratepayers Group in their submission. Um, we are talking to the change that took place in the dog policy rules for Hotwater Beach in 2016. Um, originally, the council at that time had uh, sent out business as usual rules and uh, had suggested no change. But through the 2016 um, submissions, uh, submissions were made that substantively changed the rules of Hot Water Beach um, without any further consultation with the residents and has had an enormous impact on the well-being um, of the dog owners and the dogs of Hot Water Beach. 
Uh, so the rules that were put in place in 2016 create um, no access at all um, on the southern populated part of Hot Water Beach for four months of the year. So for four months of the year, dog owners cannot go on that part of the beach at all. It effectively cuts the beach in half and creates no access to the other half of the beach. Um, so it requires residents and ratepayers to get into their cars if they wish to walk on the beach for four months of the year through the summer. So we're proposing that, that those rules be changed back to similar rules for half um, acknowledging. So there are significant issues that have resulted in us not being able to access that beach for four months of the year as it requires us to get into our cars. So I acknowledge what Sheila Wesley said from St. That it requires us to go to local beaches in our cars, so it creates car parking issues. It creates um, further uh, cars on very busy congested roads already. Um, a lot of sustainability issues about getting residents into cars for um, older populations. And so essentially we're not managing the issue locally. We're pushing it into uh, beaches like Sailor's Grave, Hahe and Cooks. And it's a very common activity to do. Um, just one moment. Um, also, the, the rules are very blanket, and so it doesn't reflect the actual usage of the beach. Uh, the beach is very determined by access to the hot water, as I'm sure you are aware, and so it's based on the low tide. And um, so that does determine it, but still, even if the low tide is in the earlier morning and the later evening, it does substantially reduce the usage. So these very restrictive blanket rules actually don't really address the issues. And so even though there's very little use of the beach during these times in the morning and late evenings, we're still not allowed access and it does create a lot of difficulties for the community. There's very limited public land in Hotwater Beach and so there's only one small dog walk, which is quite limited for us to walk in. Um, so we propose. It also creates inconsistencies with our local beaches that are very similar, Hahe and Cooks Beach. So we have very similar dynamics. We have very similar dotterel populations, as far as we're aware of, and yet our rules are substantively different. So it creates um, both inequity, but also inconsistency and confusion. And there's still a lot of confusion even in the local community, let alone with visitors. What the rules actually are here. Um, so we're seeking equity and consistency. Um, we do cherish our local environment. We wouldn't live here un like, unless we did actually love local community and natural environments. So we're very aware of the need to balance the needs of the environment with um, the uh, residents, but also balancing that need for the visitors. We're a very, very small um, community. Um, so our political voice can be very small, so I um, feel it would be um, very important for council and the local community board to support the local residents, even though our political voice is very small. The impact of the enormous amount of visitors we normally get is quite big. So what we seek is um, to develop rules similar to Hahe, but in acknowledging the hot water, placing more on league rules in the southern part. So we are suggesting instead of no access at all for four months, that we have access before 9 a.m. and after 6 p.m. in that very busy summer period of the 20th December to 30th of January. Um, but that outside of those times that we are on lead hot water. So we are aware of the different nature of where we are. Thank you. Is that is that wrap that one up? I think it does wrap it up. I just let me have a little quick look at my notes. Yeah, I think that's us. So I really appreciate the council having a good look, particularly of the nature of what, how the rules were changed in 2016. Um, the council didn't believe there were issues. The changes were proposed through submissions and not re, re um, consulted with the community. So the council itself didn't see any issues. And what seems evident through the changes is there was no evidence for the changes in those rules. So the dog incident stats through 2011 to 2021 
show no elevation in any dog complaints in a hot water beach compared to Hahe and Kotzebue quite low and there's been absolutely no reduction after these are restrictive rules and our dot rules are very similar to Hahe so the changes appeared not to be evidenced or principled they were more created through the engagement so we would really request the council to go back and take a good look at those and engage deeply with the local community that is massively impacted by these rule changes. Um, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for your time. And, and just any questions first for Kevin? A very comprehensive uh, submission, and I'm sure we've uh, noted a few of your points, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll pass on to Mark. Okay. Morning, Mark. Morning. Right into my your, your turn, where you go. We we're all listening, so you've got your five minutes, so uh, we're happy to hear. Thanks very much. Lovely to be here. Um, my heart goes out to all those that have been suffering from the uh, cyclone and other effects, uh, and uh, good work, uh, Council, for getting things uh, sorted as quickly as you had and as best you can. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm speaking as a, as a resident, a long term resident of Hot Water Beach, and um, and uh, as an animal behaviourist um, and, uh, and a zoologist. And uh, so I'm kind of speaking with a few different hats here, but <coughs> the, the uh, points that Kim brought up that uh, um, have come out of the Rape Bars <coughs> Association, which I'm involved in as well, is uh, are very clear and, uh, and explain um, that our real concern is that the 216 rule change um, it lacked equity and, uh, and, that the, and it really has compromised uh, our uh, resident population here <coughs> and restricted us to a very small area um, with our dogs. You'll know that we have, uh, you know, legal responsibility to walk our dogs um, and uh, and care for them in an appropriate way. So uh, it requires us th thus to get in, establish a big footprint and drive all over the place to dogs to other beaches that have the good fortune to have more sensible rules. Um, so uh, one of one of the problems, one of the things that we've done is uh, since uh, I've been here and and uh, is uh, formed a dog group in the area. Um, I'm off down to Tauranga to do a, a talk on Saturday to the dog population down there, dog and owner population. And so education, of course, is the answer to most of these problems, and collaboration is absolutely critical. Um, the value and the reason why it's important that we have dogs in our community were explained very well by one of the prior callers talking about the um, the benefits that dogs bring to humans in so many ways. We're an older population here mainly, although there's uh, young people as well with dogs. And um, so, you know, um, as emphasised in, in some of the earlier submissions, the significance of um, of dogs to um, our population is critical to, to health and welfare of the people, and uh, and it's a huge effect. And uh, I could go into that great length if you wanted to, but we don't have time, so I won't. Um, but it is a, a fundamental and a really critical issue to understand that this is we're talking about health and welfare of people, not just dogs. And um, so one of one of the things that we really tried to do is look at the science behind it. And uh, you know, I've, I've been studying and I do um, counts of the dotterels and. And we manage the, the uh, areas where they breed and so on. And uh, most of the dog people here uh, are also involved in that uh, process, including trapping and so on. So we're active members uh, of the community to maintain and care for the wild. Our dogs are just another um, animal member of our family that has a major contributor to our and their health. And uh, it's being restricted to not being able to be on the beach for a good third of the year and be able to get to the other end of the beach even without going by car um, is obviously very restrictive for us. And that all happened in 2016. We'd like to see it come back. We've, we've, re, we've kind of uh, recommended what we think is really feasible. Dogs on lead through the hot water area to accommodate the tourist issues. And I know tourism is a big issue and possibly the dominant one that we're being um, um, really imposed upon to be, be to be honest in some ways um you know we we deal with uh, many many thousands of people coming through which is great we love that um but we also want to be able to just walk through um the hot water area with our dogs on lead so we can get to the area where we can walk so those are the kind of things that um, we're concerned about um the uh, some of the older um, population here are, are really limited in being able to travel and move and of course they can't walk across the back road 
no one can. Um, there's no access to that other area, and we have no other areas to dedicate to such activity in, in the Hot Water Beach. So we'd really love to see you know, a review of the two changes and ideally go back to the prior changes or slightly adjusted versions that we've recommended. We've reviewed the dog. I work with dog control and uh, all over the country and with, TD, with the councils uh, advising and uh, also with DOC. And uh, so, uh, you know, we've looked at it carefully and, and, and in a very sensitive way. And our recommendations are based on what we believe will really work. And, uh, and I think that uh, we've been meeting with the council for three or four years. Um, so it was pretty thrown upon us very quickly to put this proposal together. Um, and uh, so, uh, um, but we have uh, been reflecting on it for three or four years now. So our, our findings and our recommendations are well researched and we believe collaborative and, and uh, considers the care and welfare of, of our wildlife um, predominantly as well. So two things can work together, and most people who love dogs um, also love other animals, and, and we're all contributing here to the balance and the beauty of this place and the sustainability of wildlife that uh, can, at certain times of the year, um, a dotterous example between November and, and February, um, particularly when the, when the um, fledglings uh, haven't quite flown yet, there's about a month in there, that's the susceptible stage. And of course, we take great care through that time, including helping manage them uh, to be safe. We've got all of our chicks through this year, although we've had sustained quite a lot of damage from the storm um, to their nesting area. Um, but um, yeah, so we want to be a collaborative team. We want to work with the council and dog control and the other um, parts of the council that um, are responsible, and we have been doing so. Um, and we would like uh, in return um, you know, some consideration to the, the residents who actually do that groundwork to maintain um, a, a beautiful, sustainable uh, wildlife environment and thank our dear dog companion. Well, uh, thank you, thank you, Mark. You were pretty good with your timing as well. So, uh, any questions for Mark? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Mark, I see that um, that table is really helpful. I really like the way that you've put those proposed um, changes in the table in comparison to the current rules. Um, I know they reflect the Ratepayers Association ones that Kim presented. Have, have all of the, you know, I know um, not everyone is a rate, rate payer, um member, association member or attends meetings. So you've had a bit of an um, anecdotal sort of discussion with all the dog owners and they're on board with your proposals. Your proposal? Yes, we've, we've formed a group basically to to uh, um, to do exactly that. You know, so we've um, we've brought we've invited everyone in the community who has a dog and doesn't have a dog, whoever was interested, and um, so we've had uh, a lot of um, you know collaboration and chats, and um, cool. we've looked up the research and and all the different areas from dotterels to oyster catchers to um, and uh, and of course dog um, uh, numbers and to, uh, the uh, the issues. That uh, the council uh, records, you know, I think we've got we had two issues a year on average compared to um, the other um, places like Ahe and Cooks, which have some something like ten to twenty times more issues. Um, and uh, so it's the, and the issues have stayed stable or fallen. So um, so we're definitely um, not seeing issues. I mean, I, for the for the time that I've lived and looked on this beach and worked on it, you know, um, we don't have free ranging dogs here. We don't have um, uh, out of control. Not to say some people can't come and be silly, um, but uh, we're monitoring and looking after the beach um, uh, closely, uh, and that includes, um, you know, Surf Lifesavers and all the others who are involved on the beach regularly. So it's a well well managed beach, and and we work closely with Doc as well on the dock. Okay. Thank you, thank Mark. You. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Kim, uh, for your submissions, and uh, we've. Julie noted some points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. Mark. Thanks for hearing us. I appreciate your good work. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, now I'm calling on Brent Page. Brent Page. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I can't see you. If you'd like to turn your camera on, you're most welcome to. Otherwise, we can hear you well. Um, no trouble. We'd love to see Brent. 
many people many people would prefer not to see me so as long as you can as long as you can hear me clearly i'm on lisa's old imac and i just discovered this morning the browser doesn't support video so my apologies yep i know um but anyway good morning good morning councillors and morning staff um, I'm speaking this morning to the submission from Kurtuna Residents and Ratepayers Association, and my comments apply uh, only to Kurtunu East and West area. And going through the submissions, I see virtually the only submission uh, in favour of the proposed bylaw changes or Kuatunu was from the Department of Conservation. So I thought I'd um, address the environmental aspects and it got me thinking around the world, all good environmental projects have three distinct features. And they are number one, good science. They have two, they have education and three, to succeed, they always bring their local communities along with them. And if you read anything about international environmental projects, those three features stick out. So um, in our submission, we mentioned the science because we poured over Doc's own report. And of course, the, as you will know, because you've read it, uh, our breeding rate in Kuatunu over the last three years is one of the highest, if not the highest, in the entire Coromandel Peninsula. That's the science. We made some suggestions about uh, further education in our submission, and of course, uh, Department of Conservation will tell you we've probably had here in Kurtun and one of the most magnificent, hardworking volunteers looking after the doctorals anywhere on the mm -hmm. peninsula. So it really brings me to the last point, which is bringing the local community along with you. And I guess our committee was astounded when these uh, proposed bylaws were released, that there was absolutely zero consultation with our community prior to staff drawing up these proposed changes. And um, I reiterate, we fail to understand how that can be a good process for uh, ground up democracy. Um, we think we would have saved staff an awful lot of work and time and your time here today if someone from DOC and someone from council had come along and spoken to the Curtin Residents and Ratepayers Association prior to this proposal being drafted. As simple as that, probably a 30 to 60 minute meeting. So we'd like to um, register our dismay at the process. And looking further into the process, it's interesting that our staff have had two and a half months on the submissions and the public gets two days. And I, and I fail to understand the democratic process there and the balance in terms of um, time needed to pour through those submissions, but also I can't understand the complete lack of transparency there. Anyway, that's a bit of an aside. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to say because I think our submission is clear cut. My only last point is I think staff in TCDC that work with KRA would, and I hope they would, support my um, comment that we do a lot to um, build up uh, the solidarity and goodwill between all our partners, TCDC, Environment, Waikato and Department of Conservation. And there's a, um, this uh, process has seriously jeopardised that goodwill. Um, and uh, I guess I can echo what Mark said. I mean, staff have been absolutely brilliant through this last week. I mean, it's a horrendous week. Um, and it's sort of taken the focus off this a bit. But I, I would like to see a commitment for ground up democracy that would prevent uh, this sort of process for even having to um, uh, being gone through in the first place and create such bad will. That's me done, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Brent. Um, is there any questions for Brent? Brent. Brent, sorry. Brent. Any? 
No, Brett, no, there's no questions from the table. We hear you loud and clear, and we'll yep. take the notes. And uh, thank you very much for coming on today to uh, express your views. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Lynn Bird. Is she available? I saw her dial in. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, we hear you loud and clear, Linda. Do you want your camera on or off? It's up to you, but uh, we can hear you loud and clear. I'll leave it off. My internet's a little bit slow and jittery today, um, but thanks for your time. I'm going to keep mine brief. I am I just get a little bit incensed every time I see dog control policies come out, and, and thank gosh we're living in a world where um, our rules, as far as I'm concerned, are rather draconian for dog owners. Um, you know, we, we, we tend to get labelled as lacking care or um, intelligence, I think, in terms of how we manage our dogs and our dog walking. And we live in such a beautiful environment, many of us like to walk, um, and we like to do that with our companions. And I think that, you know, dogs for a lot of people are, um, are great companions and they're great comfort for a lot of people. I would like to see that dog banning periods um, on beaches are thrown out the window completely um, on all of our beaches. And I think we need to go and allow dogs back on the beaches with um, the owners attached to a lead. These dogs are under control. They are not going to chase birds up and down the beach. They're not going to disturb nest, nesting areas. Maybe we need to be looking at it more of a case that it's not just dogs that disturb natural nesting areas, it's also humans. And maybe we need to have a little bit more around signage, um, yeah. actually explaining the situation of what these seabirds are that are on these beaches so that all people actually read them, not just dog owners being banned altogether. Um, I think that's kind of really the guts of it for me. I just get, you know, I get annoyed. I, I go overseas a lot. I see other countries that have got much more um, looser rules around dogs. Dogs are welcome on public transport. They're welcome into bars. Um, you know, these are people's companions and it is part of people's mental health and in lots of cases to have um, a, a pet like a dog. Um, and I think we just need to be able to be a little bit more relaxed on how we um, have them in our environments and how we're allowed to have them. All right. Thank you, Linda. You heard your point. Thank you very much. Um, any questions for Linda? No questions from us, Linda, but we thank you very much for uh, making the effort and coming along and talking to us. Thank you. Now, 1130 is for John Drummond. Yes, he's just arrived. He just arrived. So, John, if you're on, we'd, we'd like to hear you now. Thank you. You're on mute, John. Oh, reminds me of my youngest. I Got Daniel Max. Nothing, nothing. Okay. No, we My thing is just being fine for the next time. No. So John is our last speaker today and he's from the Tower of Environment Society. So we'll just be with him for a few moments and see if we can do more for him. Okay. 
John, can you hear us? Oh, yeah, it's a bit better, but it shows he's just trying to read okay. read me. Yeah, it's trying to read the one. I had um, told my team if he could email through some of the submission points that we would distribute that to the counselors. Thank you, Ariana. So, yes, so we've asked uh, that John Neal emails that uh, information through so that uh, staff will get that and I'm going to read that as well. So I think that's the end of our uh, submissions today. I want to thank Council very much for giving up that time today to uh, come visit. And for start, I hope there's some information that you can consider. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'd like to uh, declare the meeting closed at 11.30. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. 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 Bye-bye.